your loss to IBM D Blue in 1997, in my eyes, that is one of the most seminal moments in the history. Again, I apologize for being r romanticizing the notion, but in the history of our civilization, because humans as a civilization for centuries saw chess as you know the peak of what man can accomplish of intellectual mastery, right? And that moment when a machine could beat a human being was inspiring to just an entire, anyone who cares about science, innovation, an entire generation of AI researchers. And yet to you that loss, at least if reading your face, was seemed like a tragedy, extremely painful, like you said, physically painful. Why? When you look back at your psychology of that loss, why was it so painful? Were you not able to see the seminal nature of that moment? Uh, or, or was that exactly why it was that painful? Uh, uh, as I already said, losing was painful, physically painful. Physical. And the match I lost in 1997 was not the first match I lost to a machine. It was the first match I lost, period. Yes. Uh, that's... Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, right. Yeah, uh, that, that makes all the difference to me. Yes. First time I lost. It's just... Now, I lost, and uh, the reason I was so angry that I just, you know, I had uh, suspicions that my loss was not just the result of my bad play. Yes. So though I played quite poorly, you know, just when you started looking at the games today, I made tons of mistakes. But, you know, I, I had all reasons to believe that, you know, there were other other factors that had nothing to do with the game of chess. And that's why I was angry. But look, it was 22 years ago. It's what on the bridge. We can analyze this match and this is with everything you said. I, I agree with probably one exception is that uh, considering chess, you know, as the sort of... Uh, as a pinnacle of intellectual activities, was our mistake. Because, you know, we just thought, oh, it's a, it's a game of the highest intellect and it's just, you know, you have to be so, you know, intelligent and you could see things that, you know, the, uh, the, ordin the, the uh, ordinary mortals could not see. Mm -hmm. It's a game. And uh, uh, all machines had to do in this game is just to make fewer mistakes, not to solve the game. Because the game cannot be solved. I mean, according to Claude Shannon, the number of legal moves is 10 to the 46 power. Mm -hmm. Too many zeros. So just for <laughs> any computer to finish the job, you know, uh, uh, in the in, in next few billion years. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have to. It's all about making fewer mistakes. And I think that's the this match, actually, and what's happened afterwards with other games. With, with Go, with Shogi, uh, with uh, video games. It's a demonstration that it's the machines will always beat humans in what I call closed systems. Mm -hmm. The moment you build a closed system, no matter how the system is called, chess, go, shogi, dota, uh, machines will prevail simply because they will bring down number of mistakes. Um, machines don't have to solve it. They just have to... It's the way they outplay us, it's not by just being more intelligent. It's just by by doing something else, but eventually it's just it's capitalizing on our mistakes. When you look at the chess machines ratings today and compare, compare this to Magnus Carlsen, it's the same as comparing Ferrari to Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. It's the the gap is yes. is I mean by chess standards is insane. 34, 3500 to 2800, 20, 20, 2850 on Magnus. It's like difference between Magnus and, a, and an ordinary player from an open international tournament. Uh, it's not because machine understands it better than Magnus Carlsen, but simply because it's steady. Machine has steady hand. And I think that is what we, 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 we have to learn from 1997 experience and from further encounters with computers and sort of the, the current state, state of affairs with Alpha Zero, you, uh, beating other machines. The idea that we can compete with computers in so-called intellectual fields, it's, it was wrong from the very beginning. It's just, it's, by the way, the 1997 match was not the first victory of machines over... Over Ch grandmasters. Over, over grandmasters. Yeah. No, actually, it's, I played against first decent chess computers from late, from late 80s. So I played with the prototype of Deep, 
a blue called Deep Thought in 1989, two rapid chess games in New York. I won handily to both games. We played against uh, new um, chess engines like Fritz and other programs. And then it's the was Israeli program Junior that appeared in 1995. Right, 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 I remember. Yeah. So there, there were there were several programs. I you know I lost a few games in Blitz. I lost one match against the computer a chess engine in 1994 Rapid Chess. So I lost one game to the Blue in 1996 match. The man the match I, I won. Some people you know tend to forget about it that I won the first match. Yes. But it's it's we we made a very important psychological mistake, thinking that the reason we lost blitz matches, five, five minutes games, the reason we lost some of the rapid chess matches, 25 minutes chess, because we didn't have enough time. If you play a longer match, we will not make the same mistakes. Nonsense. So this, yeah, we had more time, but we still make mistakes. And machine also has more time. And machines, machine will always, you know, uh, will always be steady and consistent compared to humans' instabilities and inconsistencies. And um, today we are at the point where, yes, nobody talks about, you know, uh, humans playing as machines. Now, machines can offer handicap to, to, to top players and still, you know, uh, uh, will, will, will be favorite. I think we're just learning that it's, it's, it's no longer human versus machines. It's about human working with machines. That's what I recognized in 1998 just after licking my wounds and spending one year and just, you know, ruminating so the so what's happened at, in, in this match. And I knew that though we still could play against the machines. I, I had two more matches in, in 2003 playing both uh, Deep Fritz and Deep Junior. Both matches ended as a tie. Mm-hmm. Uh, though these machines were not weaker, at least, actually probably stronger than Deep Blue. Um, and by the way, today... Uh, Chess app on your mobile phone is probably stronger than Deep Blue. Than Deep Blue I'm yeah. not speaking even about chess engines that are so much superior. And by the way, when you analyze games we played against Deep Blue in 1997 on your chess engine, they will be laughing. Yeah. So this is, and it also shows that's how chess changed because uh, chess commentators they look at some of our games like Game Four, Game Five, brilliant idea. Now you ask. Uh, um, Stockfish, you ask yeah. Houdini, uh, you ask Commodore, all the leading chess engines. Yeah. Within 30 seconds, they will show you how many mistakes both Gary and Deep Blue made <laughs> in the game that was uh, 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 trumpeted as the as a great uh, uh, chess match in 1997. Well, okay, so you've made an interesting, if you can untangle that comment. So now in retrospect, it was a mistake to see chess as the peak of human intellect. Nevertheless, that was done for centuries. So, in, me, by the way, in Europe, because yeah. you know you move to the Far East, they were go, they they they, right. they had strong but games, again, games. Again, some of the games, like you know, uh, uh, board games. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree. So, if I push back a little bit, so now. You say that okay, but it was a mistake to see chess as the epitome, and now, and then now there's other things maybe like language, like conversation, like some of the things that, in your view, is still way out of reach of computers, but inside humans. Do you think? Can, can you talk about what those things might be, and do you think just like chess, they might fall um, soon with the same set of approaches? If you look at Alpha Zero, the same kind of learning approaches as the machines grow in size. No, no, it's not about growing in size. It's about, again, it's about uh, understanding the difference between closed system and open-ended system. So you think that key difference, so the board games are closed in terms of the uh, the rule set, the actions, the state space, everything is just constrained. You think once you open it, the machines Uh, are lost? Not lost, but again, the effectiveness is very different because machine does not understand the moment it's reaching territory of diminishing returns. Mm. It's the, to put it in, 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 in a different way, machine doesn't know how to ask right questions. It can ask questions, but it will never tell you which questions are relevant. So there's the, it's like about the, it's, the, it's a direction. So these, it's, I think it's in human machine relations, we have to consider so uh, our role and people, many people feel uncomfortable that this, the territory that, that belongs to us is, is shrinking. Uh, I'm saying, so what? You know, this is eventually will belong to the last few decimal points. But it's like having so a very powerful gun 
that's and 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 all you can do there is slightly you know alter the direction of the bullet maybe you know 0.1 de uh, uh, degree of, of this angle but that means a mile away 10 meters of the target yes. so so that's we have to recognize that is a certain unique human qualities that machines in a foreseeable future will not be able to reproduce. And, uh, and the effectiveness of, of this cooperation, collaboration, depends on our understanding what exactly we can bring into the game. So uh, the greatest danger is when we try to interfere with machine superior knowledge. So that's why I always say that sometimes you'd rather have, by reading this history, pictures in radiology, uh, you may probably prefer an experienced nurse than rather than having top professor yeah. because she will not try to interfere with machines understanding so this it's very important to know that if machines knows how to do better things in 95% 96% of territory we should not touch it because it's it's it happened we, it's like in chess recognize they they do it better see where we can make the difference you mentioned alpha zero i mean alpha zero is it's it's a it's actually a first step into what you you may call ai because Right. Everything that's being called AI today is just it's uh, it's it's one or, or another variation of what Claude Shannon characterized as a brute force. It's a yeah. Type A machine, whether it's Deep Blue, whether it's uh, Watson, it's and all these these the modern technologies that are being trumpeted as as AI. It's still brute force. It's the all they do. It's they do optimization. It's this. They are you know they uh, they keep you know, improving the way to process human-generated data. Mm -hmm. Now, AlphaZero is, is the first step towards you know, machine-produced knowledge, yes. which is, by, by the way, it's quite ironic that the first company that championed that was IBM. <laughs> oh, it's, it's in backgammon. Interesting, it's in backgammon. backgammon. Yes, you, just, you, should, you, should, you should look at IBM, it's, it's, it's a neurogammon, it's the it's the scientist called <laughs> Cesaro. So He's still working at IBM. They had in the early nineties. It's just, it's the it's the, in, in the program that played you know the Alpha Zero type. So just trying to come up with own strategies. But because of success of the Blue, uh, this project uh, had been not abandoned, but just you know it's it's it wasn't uh, it was put on cold. And now we just you know it's 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 uh, you know it's everybody talks about about this the the machines generated knowledge. So as revolutionary, and it is. But there's still, you know, many open-ended questions. Yes, AlphaZero generates its own uh, uh, data. Many ideas that AlphaZero generated in chess were quite intriguing. So I, I, I looked at these games with, not just with interest, but with, you know, it's, it was quite exciting to hmm. learn how machine could actually, you know, juggle all the pieces and just... Uh, uh, play positions with a broken material balance, sacrificing material, always being ahead of other programs, you know, one or two moves ahead by by foreseeing the consequences, not over-calculating because machines, other machines were at least as powerful in, in calculating, mm -hmm. but it's having this unique knowledge based on discovered patterns mm -hmm. after playing 60 million games. Almost something that feels like intuition. Exactly, but there's one problem. Yeah. Now, uh, the simple question, if, if AlphaZero faces superior opponent, let's say another powerful computer accompanied by a human who could help just to discover certain problems, because I already, I looked at many AlphaZero games, I visited their lab, you know, spoke to Demis Kasabis and his team, and I, I know there's certain weaknesses there. Now, if these weaknesses are exposed, then the question is, how many games will it take for AlphaZero to correct it? The answer is hundreds of thousands. Even if it keeps losing, it can, yeah. it's this because the whole system is based. Yeah. So it's now imagine so that says you can have a human by just making a few tweaks. So humans are still more flexible, and and as long as we recognize what is what is our role, where we can play sort of uh, um, so the uh, uh, most valuable part in this collaboration. So it's it will help us to understand what are the next steps in human machine collaboration.